The purpose of this video tutorial is to show how minimum reinforcement over supports for two-way slabs per ACI 318 is calculated in Adapt Builder. And this has to do with the way support lines are created and set up for purposes of design strips in the program. In this example we'll be using MKS units and you'll notice here that we have banded tendons in the X direction and distributed tendons in the Y direction. And we'll go ahead and just hide the tendons. The model in this case has been um, analyzed. We've analyzed it for uh, ACI 2014 code. You can see that the criteria for the strips, if I go ahead and turn on the strips here, are two-way slabs. So if I go to the design properties here, the criteria is a two-way slab. And the load combinations that were set up were evaluated for um, gravity service combinations and also for strength. So for service we calculate minimum reinforcement over supports based on just the prescriptive requirement um, of 0 0.00075 times the area of the strip over the column in the two orthogonal directions whichever one gives the greatest area we supply the reinforcement for that area so we'll go ahead and investigate a column here we can see at this column if I go ahead and look at the uh, this direction let's go back and under strips we're going to generate the strips again just to reset and you'll see that for example at this column if I look at the tributary for the strip which is half of the span to the right half of the span to the left and I'll go ahead and double click on that design cut the distance here is 875 centimeters the height is two, uh, 25 centimeters and if we take the requirement necessary for minimum reinforcement that we just mentioned 0 0.0075 times that area um, we get a requirement of 16.1 um, square centimeters. That's the requirement for this direction. And then if we also look at the opposing direction, if I go to the opposite direction, we have a strip that looks something like this. So we would expect the um, opposing direction to be based on, let's say, this particular tributary. And we can quickly see that that distance is 780 centimeters which is less than the 875 so this area would not control the, the direction that controls would be this this area here 875 times 25 so if we go ahead and design our design strip we'll go to FEM design the design sections and once I design those sections I can go ahead and double click again here and see what reinforcement has been calculated. So we said there was a requirement of uh, about 16.1 square centimeters for the uh, design cut in, or the design section in question and we can see here that the program is actually calculating a requirement for minimum rebar at the top of 24.56. So that's quite a bit more than what we had calculated based on our initial assumption and calculations. Now the way the program treats the section when it calculates the minimum reinforcement is as follows. It knows the area of the section in question. That's already calculated here. That's shown 875 and 25. For the transverse direction when it calculates the area for that direction it, it doesn't technically use the the design strip in the transverse direction because we, we could have a model that doesn't necessarily have that particular strip calculated. In other words, you can calculate individual design strips and the program wouldn't know what that section area is. So the way the program reads the transverse direction is it will take the distance from the support in question, so that's the support here, and it takes the distance to the uh, top side and the bottom side. If there are two nodes at the top, it will take half of the distance between the support node and the next node in sequence. And the same thing for the bottom. In this case, there's only one node above, and that node is here on the end. And I, 
I'm mo now moving that node. And on the bottom, there's also only one node. So the program interprets this as a cantilever on the top and a cantilever on the bottom. And when it takes the, the, the tributary for two cantilevers, it takes the full distance. So it's actually taking, in the transverse direction, it's taking a, an area based on the distance from this point all the way down to this point, which results in an area greater than that of the actual section cut. And that's where we get the 24 um, Point five six. To do that calculation, if I was to take a dimension from this point all the way to this point, we have around 13.1 um, meters. And if I take 13.1 meters times the depth, which is 25 centimeters, I get the area of steel shown here at 24.56. That's what's going on with this particular um, strip. Now the top is truly a cantilever so we're not going to modify the top however we may we may say well this point needs to be brought down to here but in this case this is sufficient this will work because there's this corner in the slab and this section where this strip is extended up to capture this portion of that of that slab in terms of design cuts so the top is okay this truly is a cantilever and it's happening on most of these y direction strips. But the bottom is not a cantilever. There's clearly a column here. So if we added a, a, if we add a support um, point along our support line, and I'll go ahead and just insert a point on top of that, and I bring that point now, let's say, somewhere in the column, now the program interprets this differently. It looks at the top side. There's still a cantilever. It takes the full distance. And from this point at the support, down to the bottom, it knows that that's not the last point in sequence. There's another point that's a cantilever below. So now it takes this in half. So if I was to now regenerate my design strips, we'll go back to um, strips, generate the sections. I've added a new point, so we want to regenerate the strips. And I'll go ahead and just design that one. And I'll design the one next to it just to show the difference. We'll go ahead and say FEM design the design, design sections. Again, looking at the required area here, now this goes to 16.41, which was our original assumption, 16.1, I think we said. So this is now the correct area based on the geometry for both orthogonal directions. If I go to this column, we can see that this is now 22.8 it's based on the distance from this top point all the way down to the bottom point. So this uh, placement of support line vert vertices um, affects how the program interprets a span, whether it's a cantilever or a true span, and it can affect this minimum reinforcement. In this model, the, the um, required fix would be to add support lines near these supports so as to break that up into the proper spans. And if we look at the other direction, we can see here that we have a point at the far end and a point here. So if we're looking at the minimum reinforcement here, the program is actually taking a tributary that's based on, I'll just add a line here, based on the distance from here to this line all the way over to the edge of the slab. And it's that that is one of the one of the checks it's using in terms of the span length. In the other direction, it's just using the actual section cut, which means that this would actually control. And at this support, you would get excessive reinforcement because it's using this full distance, whereas it should be really using this distance. So again, in the x direction, the user should place a new support line vertex here. And I'll go ahead and add that where that should be placed. We'll take this and just drag it on the column. And now it breaks that up where this distance between these two lines is now used. If you have any questions, please contact us at support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.